Hey everybody, it's Craig Mackey here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get Ari Alexa colors out of your Panasonic GH5 vlog footage. All right, let's get started. All right, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, and I'm going to show you a LUT that really does a good job of improving the color of vlog footage, and I think it does a great job on skin tones as well. So I'll just walk you through this really quickly, and then I'll show you a graded clip of these. So this is shot in vlog, and I've got a couple different scenes. I have sort of a bright sky there and a cloudy day, then I have a brighter day here in the shade, and then I have some bright sort of sunlight there. Then also you can see this is sort of a backlit type of scene, and then I have some indoor shots here as well. This is from Photo Plus, and I've got some different skin tones that you can look at and some different colors. So I want to show you this LUT first. Now this is a LUT that converts your GH5 vlog footage to Ari Alexa type colors. Now this is a paid LUT, unfortunately. I'm not paid to tell you about this. This isn't a sponsored video. I just bought a bunch of LUTs and tried a bunch because I was really struggling with my vlog grading and trying to get good colors out of it. And I found this and it works, so I'm sharing it with you. So I'm not profiting from this or anything. I'm just sort of sharing this information with you. It's up to you if you decide to purchase it. That's just up to you. Now also too, when you use this LUT, there's an Ari generator. I'll put links to these in the description box below. And you would just set it like this if you wanted to generate the Ari LUT. You just say source format, log C, video, Ari 709, 3D LUT. And then what happens is this LUT here converts your GH5 V-Log to an Ari Alexa type of C-Log. And then you would use the Ari LUT to get the Ari color. So that's how it works. Now, a couple of tips. I think it's important to get accurate exposure. So if there's a person in the scene, I think it's important that you expose for the skin because how it works is the dynamic range in our eyes is probably 20 stops. But your camera, the Panasonic GH5, I'm not exactly sure what the dynamic range is. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 11 stops in V-Log. And it's just not enough to capture the entire scene. So if you're shooting with a bright sunlight sort of backdrop, you're not gonna capture all your highlights and all your shadows. So I would say to you, if you're going to have people in your shot, then put the focus on getting a good exposure on them. So some of these things I actually know and don't always do on every shoot, just out of laziness. <laughs> but for now on, I'm going to be using my light meter. So I have the Sekonic 478D. Now this works for video really well. They have some newer ones as well. Uh, you can check out those as well. But this is the one that I use. So if there's a newer version, then you might want to check that out. But how it works is you set your ISO. So say you're shooting on the Panasonic GH5 and Vlog, that's 400 is your native ISO. Then you put your shutter speed, which would be 50 if you're shooting 24 frames per second. And then it'll tell you say F5.6, F8. You set your camera to that, you're gonna get an accurate exposure on the person. Now also, I suggest using the X-Rite video color checker. So I have this one here in the middle. They have three different sizes. I have this one. So you can do a custom white balance with your Panasonic GH5. I've got a video about that. I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. You can check that out if you don't know how to do a custom white balance. And then you take a shot of this card on location and then you can just use the eyedropper tool in Adobe. So if you're at looking at the top here, if you go to the color, then you have all your color grading tools. If you go to the white balance selector, you just click on that, you click on the white box, and that will refine your white balance after. But it's good to do a custom white balance for different scenes. So for example, if you're shooting and it's sort of this gray color and you're in the shade, then do a custom white balance for that. Then if you move to another scene where you're in the sun, then do a custom white balance for that. And then also take a shot of that card because it's really about getting the best white balance you can in camera and then having a shot of this card as well. Now you should also calibrate your display monitor. So I'm using an iMac. I use the i1 Display Pro to calibrate my monitor so that I know that the colors that I'm getting on the shoot are accurate when I'm looking at my monitor as well. So those are the things that you should have. You should have this. You should have a calibrated monitor. You should have something like this passport. The other side is gray. So you shoot the gray card with the scene properly lit. And like I said, you could use a light meter or you can use your zebras or your waveform monitor. Just make sure that you have an accurate exposure for what you wanna capture. So if it's people, then make sure that they're accurately exposed. So those are just a few tips right there. So let's go back to the timeline. All right, so let's have a look at some of this vlog footage in the different layers. So when you buy the emotive color LUT, you also get this conversion LUT for 8-bit or 10-bit. Now, according to Alex, the creator of the emotive color LUT, he thinks that Adobe Premiere changes the color of your footage. 
So we have some conversions here for 8-bit or 10-bit. I recommend you shoot your vlog footage in 10-bit. So that's the first thing you apply is that conversion LUT. And then he has a conversion LUT here for daylight and for tungsten. So if you're shooting mostly outdoors, then just buy the daylight one. If you're shooting mostly indoors, then get the tungsten one, or if you can do both, it's up to you. So this converts your GH5 footage, your vlog GH5, to the Ari Alexa Log C format. So that's the first step. Now the next step is if you go to the Creative tab, you can apply two different ones here. Then you go to this one. Now that LUT generator I talked about, this is the LUT that you would generate using that. And then this converts your footage to go from the Log C to Rec 709. So now I'm gonna enable all these so you can see it. So the first thing you're not gonna see is that 8-bit or 10-bit conversion LUT. The second thing you can see I'm enabling the RE conversion. And then this third one is just some exposure and contrast adjustments on the top layer. So I recommend using adjustment layers for different things. And then you can see I have this one split. So I'm just doing all my exposure and contrast adjustments on top of everything else. So you can see here that it gives you some really good skin tones. You can see there's the V-log and then you can see there's the LUT applied. So very little work on my part. Once I apply that LUT, I'll just click here and you can see if I go to my basic corrections up here, I've just left the white balance at zero. And then I think I raised the exposure on this shot and the shadows a little bit because it was kind of backlit. But you can see the skin tones look pretty good. What I'll do is I'll run through this clip full screen so you can see it and then we'll come back. Okay, so we're back and I'm just gonna walk you through some of this footage. You can see that the colors look pretty good. The skin tones look natural. They don't look really oversaturated. They don't look too orange. You can see we've got different lighting scenarios here. The greens don't look over-processed. I mean, everything to me looks really well balanced. Sometimes you'll find that certain colors are oversaturated, but I find it's giving you a pleasing balance of colors. And you can see here, these indoor colors look better and I've taken more care with the exposure and I did a custom white balance. So those first outdoor shots that you saw, I didn't do a custom white balance. All I did was set it to 5600 Kelvin, just because sometimes it's easier. Although in the future, I'm going to take a custom white balance for each lighting scenario, whether I move to the sun or the shade. So although I knew that, I was just cutting corners. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I did a custom white balance for these shots at Photo Plus. And I also paid more attention to my exposure. So you can see these shots look a lot better. You can see the colors look a lot richer. You can see the greens. You can see the browns. You can see the tans, the whites. You can see the colors just look really good. Now here, this is a little bit more difficult because we had the bright lights and we had the white background. But you can see her skin tone does look natural. If anything, I probably could have taken down the exposure a little bit when I shot this. But you can see even in the background, the yellows, they look good. The whites look good. Now here's another scene with some greens and some blues. And it's gotten me excited about the colors in Vlog for the first time. I think they look really good, in my opinion. I've always seen people have really nice GH5 footage, and I've never been able to capture colors like the ones I've seen. So now you can confidently use Vlog when shooting if you know that you're using this LED. At least that's how I feel about it anyway. And then here's an outdoor scene again, too. And like I said, if I turn these off, you could see the V-Log footage is just very flat. So it really makes things a lot easier. You just throw the LUT on and then you make a few fine adjustments. Now also I suggest making sure that you have your Lumetri scopes. So this is your waveform on the left, your vector scope, and then you have your RGB. If you don't see these, if you right click, or if you just click here, the little uh, wrench there, look down here at the wrench, you could see you just click on these and you can add things. So I've added the histogram there. I'm gonna take that off you can add different scopes to help you do some color grading. So this isn't a color grading tutorial, but uh, hopefully all these tips combined help you to get better GH5 vlog footage in the future.
All right, if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up for this video. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell notification so you get email updates of my future videos. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. Also feel free to share this video. Just look below this video, click on share, and you can share it on the web with your fellow photographers. All right, thanks again for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.